Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we take the FMS PA18 Super Cub and unbox, assemble, and give it a test flight. Let's get to it. The PA-18 Super Cub was an outgrowth of the famous J-3 Piper Cub of the um, early 1940s. What the Super Cub was, was an improved aircraft, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. Uh, production started in 1949, over 9,000 of these aircraft were built. They're still a very well-liked aircraft today, and they're considered the champion of backcountry um, aircraft. So in this video, what I'm going to do is unbox, review, and fly the FMS version of the PA-18 Super Cub. I'm very happy the folks at FMS allowed me to do this by providing the kit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself, the unboxing, then what is in front of us for the assembly. This is a box that the PA-18 comes in. Very nice presentation. There's a lot of information on the back, information on the side. But one thing I want to point out on this is there are two versions of this kit. There's the plug and play or the ready to fly. The ready to fly comes with a receiver on it. The plug and play does not. So what has to happen with a plug and play, which this version is, you've got to supply three things. You've got to supply at least a six channel receiver. This is the Spectrum AR620, but any six channel receiver the reason you need the six channels is for the flaps. You've got to supply your own battery. They recommend a three cell LiPo, which this is here. And then finally, you need a, at least a six channel transmitter. Again, I'm using my trusty DX6 transmitter. Again, the six channels for the um, flap function on this aircraft is obviously no retracts on the Cub. One thing that's important to point out is this is a 1300 millimeter wingspan model. 1300 millimeters is about 51 inches. There was a 1700 millimeter, 67 inches. This is a smaller version. Continuing with the unbox, these are the bits and pieces, the uh, transfer cord for the reflex. As we open it up, the wings come out, two halves, a fuselage nicely um, put in there, the front and back with the various rods to make it complete. So let's take a look at a few of the items. This is the very robust landing gear. Uh, this is good because it's metal construction. It's screwed in here, a metal post. I've seen other models in the past where this is kind of a plastic arrangement. This is gonna be a good, strong um, landing gear. The oversized tires will be fun, simulating a bush uh, type of aircraft flight, and there'll be a spring that'll connect these two here. So I'm very, uh, happy and pleased to see the quality of this landing gear. That's a good indicator of the overall kit itself. It comes with a quite complete instruction manual. This is everything needed to put the aircraft together with some background information. And this is downloadable off the internet if you wish to see the instruction manual. It also comes with a Reflex V2 system. Uh, this is installed in the fuselage. I'll show you when we do the fuselage. This is a autopilot type of function for the aircraft. It's very important for the orientation that is put in the right um, location and, and positioning on the aircraft for it to work for, uh, properly. You have to do some work with the internet to download the update to the reflex with this connector cable right here. I'm not gonna be using the reflex in this model. Um, I think that is a um, idea, perhaps for beginning pilots where you want some uh, assistance on it. Also, just my experience and training back with my airline pilot flying days with an autopilot, I don't like any autopilot feature unless I know exactly what that is gonna to do to the airplane. Uh, they do have a separate instruction manual to that. I also think that you need Windows to download that update. I have a Mac, so we're just going to fly without the reflex. It should not be an issue with this trainer type airplane. It'll be a decision. If you go on the various chat boards, there are people that have figured out how to use the reflex system, but it will take some, look, uh, some work and a download of software to update the reflex system. 
Let's take a look at the fuselage. This is what comes. This is all assembled. I can tell you it's extremely lightweight. It is tough foam construction and where there is needs to connect like with the wings, they have these plastic reinforcements with the um, screw threads in there. It's a very good way to do things. Also, one way that I grade just the thought and the attention to detail when um, making a model, and I've made a lot of model airplanes, you can see on this um, website, some of my designs. I've designed six RC model airplanes published in the modeling press, so I kind of know what I'm looking at. And so we'll take off the, um, the covering, which is a windshield. You've got a little latch right here. You simply lift this up, and there's the interior of the fuselage. We'll come back to this in a second, but to show you how well made this is, this just clicks into place and you're done. So this is the fuselage. The wings will attach here. Obviously we'll be putting the landing gear down here and the control struts. This is just a, a dummy exhaust. The motor is already installed in the nose. We'll take this cover off and take a look inside the fuselage. If you peer back there, that orange box, that is the reflex control system. I'll be taking that out and just connecting the rudder, elevator, and ailerons directly to the receiver. This is the wood battery tray, which is a nice touch with the wood. It has a sticky back system here and another nice touch this Velcro strap to hold in the battery. And these are just the connectors, very nicely marked elevator, aileron, throttle, etc., for the receiver. Underneath this wood, you can't see it, I can't see it, is the electronic speed control. That's all connected to the motor. There is no way to access that unless you want to cut away the foam, so we're not going to do that. It's just built into the airplane, and that's what we're going to use from there. So again, I think a very nice fuselage, and obviously there's going to be a second half You'll notice in here there is a tube to connect the two fuselage halves, and we will be using this for the wing and also for the fuselage to make sure everything's connected up and strong, these carbon tubes. And that'll bring us to the aft end of the fuselage. This is it right here. You can see the little tab with the screws and then the uh, reinforcement rod. The connections for the rudder and elevator the kit comes with six servos, rudder, elevator, two ailerons and two flaps are all built in. And even on the rudder, the servo's built in and it's already connected to the rudder. So it's all hinged. This is a nice no gap uh, hinge on the other side of the elevator because we're going to install the elevators. We'll have to do the connecting rod with that. So again, a very nice job. It is light as can be with this in here for the tail. So I'm very pleased with what I see so far. And of course, a, a nice little tail whip for steering on the ground. These are the two horizontal tail surfaces, the stabilizer and elevator. Again, they're all hinged. The control rod, excuse me, the control horn with the ball connectors in place. It should be very easy to put this into place and hold it with screws. The wings, there are two wing panels. And again, very lightweight, very true and rigid. There's no worries about warps or anything with this. Flaps, nice big ailerons, very nice hinges with no air gap. There's also lights in the uh, wingtip that will be fun to use. And underneath the wing, strut connection points, very nicely put in. And then servos for the ailerons and the flaps, all nicely put in. Here are the wires, um, the, the tubes all done for you that connect to the servos. And notice that they're labeled with uh, flap and, ail and uh, ailerons. Now, one thing I want to show you, just if you're new to this, you see that the flap and the aileron servos have three wires. The dark brown and red are the power. The yellow is the signal that tells it what to do. You'll notice that this one, compared to the flap, only has two wires, the black and the red. That is the power. The reason this one doesn't have a signal is it's for the navigation lights. And per the directions, what you can do to power up the lights, you simply plug it into any unused port on your receiver. This is the six channel receiver. And I know from experience that the um, 
number five channel on this one is the landing gear. We don't need a retractable landing gear, so that's the port that we will use for the lights. Let's take a look at some of the other components. Um, these are the very nice uh, struts for the wings. Notice that they're a little bit of a flexible material. That's good because that'll help hold up the wing but have a little bit of flexibility if they're not installed just uh, properly. This plugs in here, if they're, they're robust, it's, it's a tough plastic. I think this is a very wise choice of material for the struts because struts are always getting beat up on landings and grass and so forth. This is the spinner arrangement, which is nice. And it's an 11 by seven prop. This is an incredibly strong prop that came with it. And this, that's good that it comes with prop. And finally, the bits and pieces, the springs for the landing gear, some extensions for the flaps, some screws to put it all together, just really not much to do. So the next step is to study the assembly instructions, see how to put it together, assemble it, and um, we'll bring you back as we go through the assembly, although I think it's going to go pretty quickly. The first step in assembly is connecting the rear and forward fuselage halves as a built-in uh, reinforcement rod that just slips into place. Screws on top and bottom. I actually added a little bit of 5 minute epoxy to make sure that everything was held securely in place for the fuselage. These are the bits and pieces for the landing gear, primarily screws. The landing gear, the front half has the strap to put in place. The rear one shown there, the k struts will keep the aft end of the landing gear in place. These are the two wing halves and we see where we're going to attach those to the fuselage. You can see the hole for the spar, the little rectangular for the wires to go through, then the two tabs to screw for the uh, screws to hold the wing in place. Another view of the underside of the wing. You can see the aileron and flap servos. And here are the wires that come out. The one that's noted for flaps. The other three wire is the aileron and that two wire is the navigation lights. The directions are not super helpful on how to hook up the ailerons, flaps, and lights. So let me sh give you a little bit more detail how I do that. You'll have two, three um, plug flaps, ones for the flaps and the ailerons. The single plug goes into the flaps, the other one goes into the ailerons. The three wire extensions connect the um, ailerons for each side, the flaps for each side, and then the power for the navigation lights. And again, I'll have a little bit more detail later on in the video exactly how that is done. Here's the other side of the fuselage. You can see where the um, rear landing gear hold down are the cave in struts attachment. They just screw in with the supplied screws. Actually a pretty good setup for the um, for the for the cave on struts. Cotter pins hold it to the wing and these um, other struts just plug into place. So again, this is the battery connector. We'll just put that out of the way for now. You'll have the receiver of your choice. I'm using a Spectrum AR620. And the plugs on this one, number one is the ESC, number two is the aileron, number three is the elevator, four is the rudder, and five is used for the flaps. The one thing that's a little bit confusing is you have individual servos for the ailerons and flaps on each side. So there's wires going in. You normally use a Y connector to connect those up. What FMS has done is given us a special three wire connector. It's not a two wire connector. So this is for the flaps and the ailerons. So you notice the flaps are plugged into slot five. This is the one connector right here, but it branches out into three different connectors. And what will happen is the connector is for one side for the flaps, other side for the flaps, but then the third one You'll notice that the flaps all have the three wires, the brown and red, which is the power, the yellow, which is a signal, same over here. This middle one only has two wires, the black and the red. That's the power for the lights, and that's just what goes in there. It just needs any power source. So that's a little bit of a trick for the flaps and the ailerons. Remember, I disconnected this from the Reflex Autopilot system. I want direct control on that. And other than that, everything goes in just fine. You'll see that during the uh, control check. The battery is connected. Let's go ahead and do the elevators. So up, down, the rudder, left and right, ailerons, 
and the throw is about a half an inch per the directions and the flaps if you look here for a second please this is up half and full flaps right there let me hold the tail and we'll just try the throttle for a second and there should be a plenty of power for the upcoming flight I've completed the assembly of the PA-18 and it went together very well. Let me talk about a few things that went well, other things I can clarify the instructions to help you with your um, assembly build of this project. First of all, I'd like to say, I think it's a very nice looking airplane. Everything aligned well. I think it presents itself well. Things like the cowl and the engine, um, mating all that stuff up, that's a real test of how well the kit is built and it, it matches up perfectly. Even things like the spinner, it's a three-part spinner with a back plate, mid plate, and the end screws on with a metal nut to hold everything um, on. It just goes together fairly well. So let's take a little look underneath and I'll, we'll have some discussions on what to do with your build. First of all, the instructions, this section back here is not clear what this is for. There's no mention of the instructions. About 98.5% sure this is an attachment point for floats. If you're going to put this airplane on the floats, I'm not doing that. And you've just got to be careful not to, to use this for anything because there are cover plates and screws for this for a potential float application. The other mistake I made was when I originally put in the gear, I didn't realize these struts had the covering um, strap for to hold them in place. I inadvertently put the short ones here over here that's just my fault. The directions did have this blank, but I'm telling you, when you assemble the landing gear, you'll do the front ones first, the back ones after, much later when you put on the struts after the wings are attached, obviously. So the gear fits right into place. These struts hold it in. The screws screw in. They are Allen head screws. You'll need that. I neglected to put in this little cross strut initially, unscrewed and put it in. So again, just follow the directions that was in the picture to do that. But I'm very happy with this strong metal landing gear. I think it'll work out just fine. The struts you can see are a combination strap cover for the rear of the landing gear. These K-Bond struts just snap into place and they're just cotter pins that hold in the um, struts to the wing itself. For some reason, I thought this airplane could disassemble when you go to the field. That's not the case. You keep it assembled. The plane fits very well in the back of my car, 51 inch wingspan. So it's not really designed in any sense to be assembled. This is the way it is that you go to the field. The other thing that wasn't super clear in the instructions was where the tail halves, the wings is two screws on each wing half that very nicely hold the wing in place. There's a carbon rod in there for strength. There are no screws on the tails. What happens, the two halves simply insert with a carbon rod uh, spar, and then they click in place. That's what holds the two halves in place. And the only connection rod you have to do is the elevator. That goes in and, and everything works out just fine. And all the control surfaces are surprisingly well aligned. The model is completed. It balances out okay. The control surface check okay. It looks like plenty of power. And what we'll do is we'll go out to the field the next good weather day. I think tomorrow morning looks pretty good. So we'll take it out to the field and take it for a test flight. We're out here at the field for our test flight. It's just a perfect day for flying. There's not a breath of wind, nice sun. It'll be good. So um, here is the PA-18. Um, again, it came yesterday in the mail. Just put it together in the afternoon. You can see in the previous video shots, it goes together very well, and it, it looks like a good airplane. I, I, I'm very happy with the airplane. Uh, just good construction, good everything laid out, and you just take it out of the trunk, and we, we're literally going to put in the battery, do a control surface check, then go ahead with a test flight. So, wish me luck. And the eight, that's perfect.
This is the No Getting Made in Flight. Take our pearl just straight down the runway. Um, no trim required. It steered correctly. And just the minute I flew it, I knew this was going to be a good flying airplane. Initial turn on a traffic, come around, just a very confident feel for the model. I'm flying it probably about half power, so we can stay a little bit closer to the camera for the video work, but just an extremely easy, pleasant airplane to fly. We just completed uh, two test flights of the PA-18, and I think the flights speak for themselves. It's one of the nicest flying aircraft I've ever flown. You saw in the takeoff, it tracked straight down the runway. There was no trim required, which meant that the um, tail uh, wheel was aligned with the rudder perfectly. Um, it just tracked straight down. It lifted off. I felt like I was flying for the moment. It lifted off. And just some gentle turns left and right. I was flying at about half throttle with a three cell just so we could get some pictures for you for the video. And it just, it absolutely handled well. It's gonna be a fun airplane to continue to learn how to fly. It'll be a good, um, the rudder's gonna be very effective, so it'll be good for practicing turns. On the second flight, I did experiment with half flaps of the landing, but it was not a fully stabilized approach, so it's hard to see that. But this is a plane, uh, as you learn to fly it and just get more comfortable with it, it'll be, just a, a great sport flying aircraft for any time of the field. It's a good size, you can see it, it flies well, um, plenty of power. I, it's just, it's a great airplane and I think you'll be well served in this airplane. And if you do uh, select to buy one, good luck. We'll see you at the flying field.